There's one thing that used to really bother me in early recovery. I don't know if you can relate to it, but maybe you can, maybe you cannot. And what it is, is that when I came into recovery, I had a lot of issues. I had a truckload of problems. I really did. Emotional, mental, physical, spiritual, financial, court problems, you know, marital problems, child support problems, you name it. The problems are stacked up, you know, 100 feet tall, the issues I had when it came to early recovery. And I'd be sitting there just struggling to hold some sort of mediocre job that would pay me, you know, minimum wage at that time. I think it was like five, six twenty-five, you know, just minimum wage jobs. And I'd be, you know, struggling to get up in the morning, you know, keep my mouth shut at these jobs and, you know, get paid at the end of the week. And, you know, all those sort of things that regular people do with ease. It was a lot of effort for me. It was a lot of effort for me. It really was. I tell you, living without the alcohol was like putting me outside nude in the middle of New York's town, New York Square there. You know, it, it was like that. I just felt like a fish out of water and I had to like relearn everything. But what really used to get me a lot in programs when I went to these 12 step programs are these people used to walk in like, here's me like a year and a half sobriety. I think I'm doing okay. You know, I'm trying to like, I have a, I have a room at the Y, you know, I'm not going to the food bank. I'm supplying my own food. I'm looking after myself basically. And you get these people walk in and they got like six months sobriety and they got the hot chick under their arms. They got the nice car. They're good looking guys. They're well dressed. They got it all going for them. And I used to say to myself, what the hell am I doing wrong here? When is it my turn to have the girlfriend? When is it my turn to have the decent job? When is it my turn to push the baby carriage, to have a little baby? You know, cause I was getting older. I was in my thirties and I had no children at the time. And I used to always, you know, judge people like that. There's no way their life is going that well. There's no way they can do it that well. But you know, some people do, right? Some people do get it faster than others. They really do. And to this day, I see people like that handling things. You know, I used to get jealous at people when they made a decision and they stuck to the decision. I used to get jealous of that. I used to get jealous at people if they had a house and I didn't have a house. You know, all my money for the down payment of the house was sitting in the bars. That's where it was. That's where it was. It was all in the bars, all that, all that money. But I used to get jealous of people. I used to get jealous of people all the time for the simplest things, but for myself, I had to stop that. I had to stop being jealous of people, stop it. Because it wasn't doing me any good. I was comparing myself to other people. My issues are different than their issues. My problems are a lot different than their problems. And some people can go into 12 step program and just walk through it like it was nothing. Some people can do that. Other people like myself have a hell of a time stringing a few days of of happiness together or contentment together. They have a hard time doing that, a lot of us. I don't know if a lot of us do, but I know I did. The road to recovery is does not have an ending. It's a journey of many steps. It's a journey of many days of self-improvement. And I forgot that, and I had a sponsor explain it to me. They may be here, and you may want to be where they are, but your time will come. Just work on yourself, and your life will get together. It'll come together for you. And I learned that over in sobriety. When you're beaten down as much as I was, you know, a guy had a 10 speed, he was one up in me. He really was. He was one up in me easily. You know, I was living at the YMCA just one inch from going to the food bank all the time. And I had these little jobs. It was awful, awful time. But comparing yourself to other people in recovery is not fair to you or to them but mainly, it's mainly a head game that I did on myself. It really, really is. So if you're doing that and you're thinking that sobriety is a, a race or you should be somewhere else in your sobriety, get that out of there. Get that out of there, your head. Just remember that it's your life. It's your recovery. Sometimes we take one step forward and three steps back. Sometimes we go 10 feet forward and maybe one step back. Your turn will come, definitely. Stick 
to the journey. Trust the journey. Trust the process of recovery. Take all the help you can get from outside people, 12-step program, sponsor, sponsees, whatever it takes for you to feel better about yourself. Continue to do that. And all this stuff that's going on inside of you will slowly evaporate and you will become the person that you were meant to be. And let me tell you something, half the stuff that I thought was important to me in early recovery was not the truth. It wasn't the truth, what I really needed and what I really wanted. Over time, my priorities changed, my needs and my wants changed, and my expectations of myself changed dramatically over time. But it takes time, okay? It really, really does. Sobriety is a great life. Living sober is possible for you, impossible for me, doing it one day at a time. It really, really is, okay? So thanks for stopping by. My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol-free life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time. If you can take a second, can you please subscribe to my channel and take another second and hit that like button and I'll see you all later. Just remember, sobriety is freedom. Sobriety is freedom. Take it one day at a time. God bless. Ciao for now.